something like seven million years ago, there was nothing like a human on Earth. There was not even a pre-human standing upright. There were simply great apes, very much like the ones that live with us today. I was crossing the river at uh, dawn. It was just getting light, and I was jumping from stone to stone to try not to get my boots wet as I crossed this uh, broad stream. And in the middle, I paused, and I, I looked down the stream just to kind of, you know, look up and down the stream just to check out the view. And when I looked downstream, just about 20 meters away from me, maybe 30 meters away from me at the most, there was a big male orangutan and he hadn't seen me because he was doing the same thing as me. He was going the other direction, trying to cross the river without getting his feet wet. I just was so struck by the fact that what he was doing was so similar to what I was just doing. And I just felt like, you know, two apes sort of passing in the morning dawn there. get up really early, so maybe 3.30 in the morning, uh, wake up and then get ready, and we really need to be at the orangutan nest by 5 a.m. when they wake up. So that means getting ready and then hiking could be up to an hour in the rainforest in the dark using our, our headlamp to get to the nest. One of the things that makes it hard is actually finding them. They're primarily solitary, and so it actually takes a long time to find them. They can, they can go outside of our, of our study area. It may take us like a week of search days, of sort of person days, to actually find their on time. It's not realistic to just walk out into the forest myself and go find an orangutan to photograph. It's not gonna happen, so I'm always teaming up with uh, a research team that are already tracking and following orangutans. In the whole world, orangutans only live in one area, the two big islands of Sumatra and Borneo in Southeast Asia. And within those islands, of course, they only live in the remaining good areas of rainforest. One of those is a national park called the Gunung Palem, where I've been working for over 20 years with my wife Cheryl, uh, and that's where she has her long-term orangutan project. Our site is kind of deep in the interior of that national park, and it, it comprises eight different habitats. Taman Nasional ini merupakan salah satu taman nasional terlengkap di Indonesia. Kondisi sekarang eh, Taman Nasional Gunung Palung adalah tempat terakhir untuk satwa-satwa yang ada di sekitar. Karena terjadi perubahan kawasan yang luar biasa di sekitarnya.
Gunung Pong National Park is this huge area, over 100,000 hectares in size. And Chabang Panti Research Station, which is where we've carried out most of the orangutan research at Gunung Pong, is only 2,000 hectares. And these orangutans, the orangutans we study at Chabang Panti, they don't necessarily stay within those 2,000 hectares all the time. So my goal was to stay with these orangutans for five days, sometimes up to 10 days in a row over the course of an entire year. By staying with them for these long periods, I was also able to document really unique behaviors that haven't been captured before. So before I studied biology and anthropology in college, I really had no idea that other species had culture besides humans. And so when I saw these cultural traditions in orangutans for the first time, it was sort of a really big sight to behold. It was my first day and I was out uh, early in the morning to go to Chodet's nest. And uh, when I got there, I had never seen an orangutan in the wild, not even in a zoo, and I was under his tree waiting for him to wake up. Sometime around 5.30 in the morning, first thing he did was he let out this really loud long call right above me. It was a very powerful experience. It, it was not a, a sound that I'd heard before or anything like it. To me, culture is such a human element, and to see it in other species is really fascinating. Culture means so much to humans, so almost everything we do is cultural. Both with feeding traditions and with social traditions, you see things that are inherited from mother to child, or sometimes adopted from friend to friend, that show that behavior has got this wonderful flexibility, adaptability, that is so much of a characteristic of humans. <laughs> So orangutans do this vocalization called kiss squeaking. It's done by pursing their lips and making a kissing sound, like this, like. It's kind of like a real much louder vocalization. The kiss squeak is a kind of a threat sound that they make when they actually meet an unfamiliar orangutan. They also do it to people sometimes. In Gunung Palung, they do this using leaves. They grab some leaves, they bring it up to their mouth, they do this, the kiss squeak and then they throw the leaves out. At other field sites, they may not use the leaves at all. So this is an example of a local custom that's found in that area, you know, similar to the way people greet each other differently in different countries. Maybe in some place, you know, people shake hands, in another place they bow. So orangutans are also showing these interesting cultural variations between sites. I've always been fascinated to understand, you know, why we're human, what makes us human. You know, we had so many kinds of humans in the past, you know, different kinds of bipedal apes, you know, Australopithecines, and we had some that went extinct and that some that didn't and then evolved into humans. So, you know, why is that? You know, why did some population of Australopithecines eventually evolve into the Homo genus? I think that the human species is incredibly fortunate to have in orangutans and the other great apes, gorillas and bonobos and chimpanzees, representatives of what we came from. 
we still share a very, you know, large percentage of our, our DNA with um, orangutans. It may be around like 97%. Orangutans provide one window into understanding human evolution. There's different ways that orangutans make umbrellas. Uh, one way is they just break off an entire branch and sort of modify this branch to make uh, an umbrella. Other times they pull the entire branch towards them, make, make a little like, roof over their head. Some orangutans, when they're making a nest and it's still raining, really hard, they, they would actually make a big roof over their nest. They can put together a bunch of branches and leaves and sort of weave a uh, covering. And that's a really effective way for them to stay dry while they're sleeping. So all the great apes make nests, and they're the only primate that makes nests. That's important because they have large bodies and it's a way that they can sleep in the trees where they're safer from ground predators. There seems to be variation in kind of some subtleties of nest building. We heard some researchers from another site describing that they made a pillow to go in the nest. And we thought, oh, you know, we've never seen that, right? But we'd never thought about it. Like we just thought of making a nest, building a platform and lying down and we never watch that closely. Well, once we heard these researchers at another site say that, it, that they saw around convicting a pillow, we started watching more carefully. And then, and then sure enough, like we noticed that the orangutans at Gunampalam were also sometimes making pillows, putting it down just as they plop down on top of it. And so as researchers, you know, learn more and more about orangutans and know what questions to ask, know what to look for, uh, you know, we're learning more interesting things. It is so precious to be able to understand our connection to the natural world, to have these other species to give us lessons and remind us where we come from. It makes us, in some ways, humble. It also makes us fascinated. And yet, we risk losing them all.
man so much to lose. We can't protect what you don't know. We can't all go to Borneo or Sumatra. We can't all go up to the rainforest there, but we can bring the rainforest to people through through media coverage. All right, first shot. <laughs> all that practice yesterday paid off. Oh, it smokes. Every population is different, and the more we study them, the more different we realize they are. When you see an orangutan looking back at you, you can, you know, sense that there's something there in those eyes. You know, you know they're thinking. It's hard to imagine that we could just sort of let them go extinct.